with Gabrielle. I am your host, Gabrielle Jordan, and every Sunday at 7 p.m. I will give you motivational advice and entrepreneurial tips to serve leaders just like you. So, make sure you go to my website, gabrieljordaninspires.com slash excel, subscribe to the Excel Youth Mentoring Institute, and also make sure to tell other people about this because I wouldn't want anybody to miss anything. So in today's episode of Excel with Gabrielle, I have another amazing guest to share with you. Her name is Dr. Courtney Baker. She's, she is a speech therapist, the CEO of Kids Care Therapy. She is a leadership expert, speaker, philanthropist, and much, much more. With her amazing teenage mom to highly successful entrepreneur story, she's able to empower so many women to take action and become successful. Dr. Courtney is constantly making waves in pediatric health care and leadership development and training. So without further ado, I am very excited to share with you Dr. Courtney Baker. Welcome, Dr. Courtney. Hi. Thank you so, so much for joining me to Excel with Gabrielle. Sure. My pleasure. Yeah. So to start, I really want to kind of allow you to share your story with the audience here. Now, first, my mom met you at an event a few weeks ago, and when she came back, she told me about your story, and I just think it's really great. So please just go ahead and share with us, you know, how you got to this point in your life. Okay. Um, I started um, my adult journey as a single teenage mom. Mm -hmm. Um, I had my son when I was 19, and um, only... 2% 2% of 19 or, or 2% of single teenage moms ever go on to get their college degree. So um, I was very determined that that was not going to be, I'd already been a statistic once. I didn't want to do it again. Yeah. And so um, I got married when I was about 20. And um, a couple years into that, we um, just, it was just a really rough, rocky marriage. Mm-hmm. Um so I left the day before my three-year anniversary and continued in school. Um, I'd moved to Illinois where I didn't know anybody, um, and I was away from my whole family. So I continued in school and, um, of course, you know, had my son with me and um, finished my bachelor's degree and my master's degree in speech pathology, so communication disorders and sciences. Wow. So once I graduated with my master's degree, I decided to move back home to be near family, and I'd gotten my first job, and I was doing um, speech therapy for kids in the junior high and the high school for the um, high school, the, the school district that I grew up in. So it was definitely coming back home. Um, and I loved the kids. I absolutely loved what I was doing. But um, the school district wasn't a setting that I really felt like I was excelling in. Right. And I was really able to make a difference. So about a year after, once that contract was up, I um, started doing pediatric home health care. And that's, um, it was for an agency. So we would go to different kids' homes and provide therapy in their homes. Wow. And I loved doing it. I just, oh my gosh, I just fell in love. That's fantastic. Yeah. And about four months into my working for them, um, I heard the owners talk about how replaceable employees were. Yeah. And at the time, I was 28, yeah. and I was newly remarried, and my son was 10, mm-hmm. um, and... So, and my husband had um, lost his job because it was right after September 11th. Mm. And so, um, I, with all the chaos that was going on with me being newly pregnant, newly married, um, I decided to start my own company. So, (laughs) that's logical, right? (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. Um, So, I did. Um, I had. A very small amount of money in the bank, and I had, I was the only therapist, and I had about 10 patients 
and I had zero business knowledge. Yeah. So I um, decided, you know, when you're 28, you know everything. So right. why not just jump and, and start the leap of faith? And right. that's what I did. That so cool. now I'm going to show my age. Um, so that was about 12 and a half years ago. Oh. And the company now is, um, we have over 300 employees mm -hmm. And we serve over 2,000 patients across the state of Texas. So we do speech, physical, and occupational therapy services now. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And um, actually, in 2014, I was honored to be one of the top three Texas Business Women of the Year. Oh, wow. Awesome. That is so great. Yeah. And then this year, um, I'm up for the running of the uh, Texas Businesswoman of the Year again, and there's four people that have been chosen, so I'm in the top four. Awesome. That is yeah. amazing. And just from hearing your story, I mean, I can tell, I can see that, you know, that would be a great choice, and that's amazing that you won and everything. I mean, your story is really inspiring, I think, um, not just from the aspect of um, what you've been through, but kind of how you went through it. Like, you didn't you didn't kind of let those struggles be a reason for you to fail or let those struggles be your undoing or anything. You let those things kind of push you, move forward, allow you to create a business and to be successful. So just, first of all, amazing story. Well, thank you, Gabrielle. <laughs> so now I kind of want to ask a little bit about kind of how, what inspired you to do some of the things that you've done. I know I checked out, I was looking at some, doing some research on you, and I saw that you did, you started a company for, um, I think it was like a, a business, a marketing kind of company. I, I don't know if I have that correct, but. It's, it's we do, or I do consulting and coaching. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And when I was looking at it, you were talking about how you kind of, you work a lot with women, and I was wondering what kind of inspired you to want to work with women and kind of support your fellow women. Well, that has been an interesting journey. So in 2012, I decided I would go back to school because uh, as a single teenage mom, one of the things that um, I should have never done, you know, by society standards mm -hmm. was become um, successful. Ah. And so I really, one of the things I always have wanted to do was have my doctorate. Mm -hmm. And so, um, in, in, in fact... I started school at Pepperdine University in 2012, mm -hmm. and then in, I started in August, and then in September, uh, September 18th of 2012, I had a stroke. Oh, wow. In two places, yeah, I had a massive stroke. I had a seven-hour brain surgery, and um, then, so I took that semester off mm -hmm. to heal right, yeah. and started back in January of 2013. And I finished my doctorate last year. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> and when I was doing my dissertation, I really wanted to focus on something that was familiar to me. Mm. And so I looked at women in healthcare. So healthcare is 74% female, mm. but only 11% of CEOs in healthcare are female. Yeah. So I looked at that disparity and I thought, where are all these women and why are they not rising through the ranks? Yeah. And so I looked at women who had gone, you know, beyond the quote unquote glass ceiling mm -hmm. to find out what obstacles and challenges they had been through to get to where they are. Yeah. And I feel like my study was fascinating so I did a qualitative study, which means I did interviews, and I looked at women from California to Virginia, mm -hmm. so all over the country, yeah. and I looked at women who were CEOs, chief financial officers, chief medical officers, and chief nursing officers, mm -hmm. and asked them, you know, what their journey had been like, mm -hmm. and I, ha I came up with four findings. The first finding was that women um, had dealt with family issues as their struggle, mm -hmm. you know, trying to grow a family at the same time as trying to grow a career. Right, right. And then the second finding was that women were uh, currently challenged. Mm -hmm. So they had 
gone to where they were in the ranks of this uh, of their career and kind of looked out on the horizon and said, there's really nowhere else to go. You know, I mean, I'm not ready to retire, but my options are limited. Right. So they were currently feeling challenged. Yeah. The third one was gender. Now, I really went into my research with the bias that it was going to be that men had held women down. Mm. But so many of my participants mm. talked about how women had held other women down yeah. and held yeah. them down. And I asked one of them, uh, I said, tell me any if you've had any mentors. And she laughed at me and she said, well, I didn't have mentors. I had tormentors. Wow. And it was just fascinating wow. to me. And I thought, why are women doing this to each other? Right. So not only do they have or do we have, you know, the quote unquote good old boys club that we're still fighting. Mm. But we, we, we have women that are holding each other down as well. Mm. Yeah. And then the fourth finding, and I, there were four findings, the fourth finding that I found was that women, 50% of my participants talked about a lack of confidence. Mm -hmm. And that just shocked me that here they had reached the pinnacle of their success and their career, and they were talking to me, a stranger, about a lack of confidence. Mm -hmm. And so I really started thinking about that, and I was like, how many women are out there that are dealing with this mm -hmm. that aren't talking about it? That's something that I discuss a lot with, uh, with young people as well, as well as adults, how mm -hmm. important kind of confidence is and how, or like the lack there, how there is a lack of confidence in a lot of young people and adults and how that needs to be built up because with that confidence, that kind of, that gives you that drive to do things and believe that you can do certain things. So yeah, right. that, no, that's definitely, it's definitely a big one that kind of holds people back. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, uh, those, For those sure. short pinnacles, I think those are, those are right on the nose. I think with a lot of, of uh, what people are struggling with women, young people, and to bring that to light, I think is very important. And that's what you're, you're really doing in your company, which is really amazing, which is really great. Um, yes. And so now you are a speaker and an author. Here, I have your book here, The 10 Do's and Don'ts for Business Leadership. When did you write this book? Um, actually, I wrote that during the process of my dissertation. Oh, wow. I mean, yeah, so I'm never done, I guess, you know, it, yeah. it's always a work in progress. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's why a lot of people, a lot of authors might, I like, I'm, I'm the kind of person that would say that too, where I just kind of, it's almost like a gathering of information that I just kind of have in my, in a book, you know? Uh -huh. Yeah, but yeah, it's a great book. You guys should definitely check it out. Information will be down below and at the end of the video, you can tell us about the links where we can check you out and your information as well. Sure. So, can you share with us something that you would say to a young person that, you know, maybe they're having some struggles in their life at a young age now, or even an adult that's having some struggles in their life. What would you say to them to just kind of inspire them and to help them to move forward and push forward and get through all those obstacles that are coming at them? That's really a good question, Gabby, and I'm, or Gabrielle, I'm sorry. And I'm so glad you asked me that. So one of the questions um, that has come up so many times throughout life has been, you know, for, for others asking me, like, what kept you going forward? Mm -hmm. And are you familiar with the story of the bumblebee? No, I don't think so. Okay. Well, I am a bumblebee. Yeah. And I will explain to you why and what that means. Mm -hmm. So if you look at a bumblebee, mm -hmm. the body is really big. Yeah. And the wings are really small. Mm -hmm. So aerodynamically, the bumblebee should not fly, right. but it does. Mm -hmm. And that is why I'm a bumblebee. And that's my message to young people, too, and, and adults. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you are a bumblebee. You have everything in you to keep going. And, you know, yeah, you're going to have days where you don't want to get out of bed. Mm -hmm. And that happened with me when I started my company, um, there were so many reasons that this company should not exist right now. Mm -hmm. But um, I remember one time, because my husband was working nights, 
and he came in and I had the covers pulled over my head mm-hmm. and I was crying and he was like, what are you doing? And I was like, I'm so done. I can't do this anymore. Mm-hmm. And he just pulled the covers back and he said, get up. <laughs> if it was easy, everyone would do it. Mm-hmm. Get up. That's and one of the best quotes. <laughs> that, like, that's like a quote that I live by. If it's, yeah. if it was easy, everybody would do it. Yeah. That's so true. Yeah. So that quote, and also I, I just feel like um, that you have to have the desire within yourself mm-hmm. to be more than. Yes. Don't limit yourself or let society limit you by your expectations of what they think you should do. Mm. And you have to surround yourself with people who believe in you. Yes. Yes. And I'm so happy that you that you say that because, you know, I talk about this a lot with other young people, like letting them know, you know, having that confidence in who they are and, you know, what they're capable of because there will always be people that will try and tell you that you're not capable of this. And I'm just so glad that you reiterated that in a way kind of, hearing it from someone else that's very successful and hearing that from someone else that's been through struggles and hearing that, you know, this is something that you really need to take hold of. That's the mindset that you have to have. So thank you so much. That's, that's some great information. That's no problem. And you know, I mean, I, I really feel like a lot of people kind of look at the outside picture and think that it's been easy or ever, you know, everything's kind of been, you know, oh, it fell into place for me or whatever. Mm -hmm. And the real truth to that is, you know, I grew up in my home. My my parents divorced when I was four. Um, My sister was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis Mm -hmm. when I was 12. Mm -hmm. And then she died when I was 16. Mm -hmm. I mean, I grew up very young, very quickly. Mm -hmm. And you know, what? whatever the picture is on the outside, you never know. I, I saw a quote the other day, and um, it said something about never judge anybody by your ideals because you never know what they're going through. Yeah. And, or, and it was almost like it was God talking to them mm-hmm. or talking to you saying, you don't know what I've asked them to walk through, mm-hmm. you know, signed God. Yes. And I, I love that because mm-hmm. it was so true. You know, we have this idea that everyone has it, else has it perfect or wonderful, and that contributes to our own lack of confidence. Yes, yes, yeah. And, yeah, I think that's, that's something to be aware of because, um, mm-hmm. you know, that's like, almost like a skill that you have to develop, you know, making that, being aware that, you don't, you don't, you can't just judge someone by your first impression or you can't just judge a person just because of, by how you want them to act because you don't know who they are. You don't know what they've been through. And I think that's something that people need to keep in their minds to be aware of um, in business and life in general because that's really how you make good connections with people. That's how you are, are you know, that's how you are a good person with someone else and being good to another person by you know, knowing that no nobody is the same, everybody has their struggles, and you should be there to support instead of judge. So, yeah, yeah you are well, an example of that. Well, and you know, the other thing that I think that is really important to pass on to your generation, and even, um, you know, my son is twenty two. So, from that generation to even my daughter, who's eight, mm-hmm. y'all are growing up at a time that has is none other. You know, you've got social media everywhere you turn. You've got text, you've got TV, you've got, you know, just iPads and iPhones and and just everything. And it's easy to look at other people's lives, especially on social media, and think, you know, that that whole they've got it all together. Well, no one's going to post when they're having a bad day and, you know, they didn't wash their hair or, you know, whatever. So to remember that that you're comparing their best to your worst probably. Mm -hmm. And that's not, that's not realistic. That's not life. Right. Yeah. And that is awesome. I think that is a really great tip for a young person, especially a young person since, you know, 
we're going through that right now. And I, you know, you are hearing so many stories about like suicides and just depression with young people. And it's because that these, like social media is almost like a false reality. And so many people think it is reality and it's, that's making them upset about their own lives. So I think that's a good tip for a young person to kind of hone in and understand that, um, you know, nobody's life is perfect and everybody has to go through their challenges and their obstacles to get to their happy place and to get to their success. So I really love having you on here because I think that you brought this other perspective um, to Excel with Gabrielle in this way of, um, I guess, kind of honing in on your mindset in a way of being good to other people and also understanding your own story and understanding your own obstacles so that you can move forward. I just, I loved what you shared today. It was really great information, especially for young people. Um, Oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, well, I just, you know, one of my favorite uh, verses is in Romans and it talks about perseverance, Mm -hmm. building character and character builds hope. Mm -hmm. And I think if you don't have hope, what do you have? That is very, very true. Uh, yeah. So as you close out today, can you share with us uh, some of your information, how these young people, how these adults can contact it, contact you, check out your information, and read all about you? Sure. Um, my name is Courtney, but it has no U. Um, so it's C-O-R-T-N-E-Y. So you can go to Courtney at CourtneyBaker.com. And um, my kids, or, or my uh, pediatric home health care agency is called Kids Care Therapy. And we are, our corporate office is in Dallas, but we operate statewide throughout Texas. And that is just kidscaretherapy.com. Very cool. And also you can make sure to check out her book on her website. All the information, all the links will be down below. So make sure to check her out and get her book. Thank you so much, Dr. Courtney Baker, for joining me today. Thank you for having me. I've really enjoyed our time together. Yes. Thank you for watching another episode of Excel with Gabrielle. I hope that you enjoyed this interview with Dr. Courtney Baker. She is one of these women where you can pull a nugget of knowledge and information because she is so full of wisdom. Make sure to go to the links down below and check out her information. Subscribe to all of her social media. Also, make sure to go to my website, gabrieljordaninspires.com slash Excel to subscribe to the Excel Youth Mentoring Institute. And also check out some p- previous interviews with past guests. You can also email me at excel at gabrieljoinspires.com to send me any questions, comments, or concerns that you'd like me to discuss in my next video. And I hope that you'll join me next Sunday at 7 p.m. to learn, grow, and excel. See you later.